Amy Mullis, 39, died suddenly and unexpectedly on November 10th, 2018, a jolt to the roots of this small Iowan town of Earlville. What seemed like some sort of weird farming accident quickly developed into one of the most well-known murder cases in the country. An in-depth investigation unraveled a shocking web of unresolved conflicts and untold fears after a corn rake impaled Amy's body in the barn of her family's farm, along with a hotly contested legal fight. On a cold November morning, Amy's husband, Todd Mullis, called police to say he'd found her lying in the barn with a corn rake sticking out of her back. He said he felt she must have fallen and injured herself while doing housekeeping chores. Todd and the couple's 13-year-old son quickly loaded Amy into their pickup and headed to a nearby hospital. Doctors pronounced Amy dead upon arrival. From the very beginning, Todd's account of the incident necessitated that Amy had fallen onto the corn rake. Doctors examined Amy and immediate concern arose. The corn rake had four prongs, while Amy's back had six puncture holes in it. We immediately informed law enforcement and forensic experts about this anomaly. Subsequently, an autopsy on Amy showed that she did not have the class of injury one would sustain from an involuntary fall. Detectives reopened the case when it became apparent that Amy had multiple stab wounds. The subsequent investigation into Amy and Todd's relationship showed the marriage was troubled for a long time. Friends and acquaintances recalled Amy as an affectionate mother who became more and more disenchanted with her marriage. Amy had confided in more than a few people that she was scared of Todd and planned to run from him and their marriage. Amy stated back in the months preceding her death, if Todd ever found out she was leaving, he would become violent to her. All this clearly killed that image of their marriage and pointed towards another motive for murder. The investigators also informed Todd that Amy had conducted an extramarital affair earlier in the year. This had put even more stress onto the couple's relationship. The prosecution then used this as one of the more central reasons that Todd had such a desire to control and punish her for having an affair, her death. As more and more evidence was brought forward, Todd's complete version of events was gradually unraveled. Forensic evidence analyzed at the crime scene and the testimony of the couple's son contradicted Todd's account. The child testified that Todd was attending to other farm concerns in the area while Amy entered the barn to perform some tasks. However, testimony from the boy indeed had some discrepancies in the timeline that Todd had presented and indicated he may have an opportunity to harm Amy without any person knowing it. The less than tearful way Todd carried on after Amy's death troubled the investigators. In interviews, he seemed detached and preoccupied with business matters rather than in a state of shock and grief over his wife's sudden death. Todd's apparent lack of emotion, combined with the emerging evidence, made him the lead suspect. Todd Mullis was then charged with first-degree murder after being imprisoned. The prosecution, during the trial, had sufficient proof to show that Todd struck Amy with the rake willfully since he had just come out of being told about their separation. They indicated how Amy had confided in friends that she was afraid of Todd, how Todd's version of what happened on the particular day had discrepancies, and what good evidence showed that Amy had stabbed herself intentionally prior to her death. A fall of this nature could not, the prosecution further outlined, have caused Amy's injuries. That it took a great deal of effort to give these six puncture wounds showed that during the incident more than a common farm accident occurred, but instead, a weapon in the form of the rake was used in committing it. The testimony of the medical examiner also cited that Todd's version of Amy's fall could not have possibly resulted in the multiple strikes. One of the most damning pieces of evidence turned out to be a series of Google searches on Todd's devices. Specific search terms like organs in the body, indicated premeditation according to the prosecution. The jury refused to buy that the health issues on the farm had anything to do with the searches, despite the best efforts of Todd's defense attorneys. 
The central defense arguments of Todd Mullis were that the death of Amy was a terrible accident and that he did not have any concrete evidence to link him with the crime. The defiant arguments identified symptoms of shock and despair and not guilt in Todd's suspicious behavior and timeline. They also pointed out that Amy's extramarital romance may have exposed her to other suspects with a hidden agenda. The defense also produced testimony to Todd's nonviolent past and his commitment to becoming a successful farmer with strong ties to the community. They showed him as a man who was trying to put his problems with his wife behind him and start to build their life together. Against these, the prosecution produced a Todd who was jealous and tyrannical in character, who would stop at nothing to keep Amy in subjugation. A jury convicted Todd Mullis of first-degree murder in connection with Amy Mullis's death after a two-week trial. The jury's sentence was life without the possibility of parole. The verdict brought closure to Amy's family and friends, who had believed for a long period of time that she did not die as a result of an accident. The story was a grim reminder that abuse and control within a homestead can rise to deadly outcomes. Amy's death underlined the importance of closely monitoring concerns and warnings about people in abusive relationships, and also how forensic evidence can be important in uncovering the truth behind apparently inexplicable tragedies. The Cornrake murder is but one example of the difficulties law enforcement faces in negotiating false pretenses and the labyrinthine nature of domestic abuse cases. Todd Mullis declared himself innocent throughout his trial despite overwhelming evidence against him. Forensic data combined with the testimony of Amy's friends created a powerful story of panic, control, and deadly results. This case vividly points to the dangers that may well lurk in relationships that superficially, at least, appear normal. It underlines the importance of thorough investigation and thoughtful consideration of concerns expressed by victims about their safety the aftermath of this tragedy will haunt the hamlet of Earlville for many years to come as a grim reminder of how suddenly violence can destroy a family. This horrible tale of Amy Mullis' death will always show the worst streak of humanity and unnecessarily will remain controversial for a pretty long time. It has come as a lesson to show the results of unchecked fury and also the caution required while protecting the weak. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you never miss out on our latest content. We dive into the most intriguing and shocking crime stories each week, and your support means the world to us. Until next time, stay safe and take care of yourself. See you in the next video.